Greetings, my friends, and welcome to this weekend's Global Home Church Sermon. It's amazing how fast time is going by, how many of these sermons God's given me the privilege of, of doing over the, over the last decade and a half. I just give him all the glory, and I thank him so much for every one of you that have tuned in. Whether this is your first time watching or your thousandth time, welcome. Jesus Christ loves you all. I love you all. It doesn't matter what your religion is, lack of religion, your sexual preference, sexual orientation, your age, your sex, your your social standing, doesn't matter. You're all welcome here. You're all loved by Jesus and myself. I don't take up any offering, don't ask for any money, don't accept a penny. Jesus Christ paid the price on the cross. I don't believe anyone should be asking for money to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And um, it's a safe place here. You'll hear the truth that'll lead you to the gates of heaven, not the lies that lead you straight to the gates of hell that most preachers and churches and everywhere else preach today. So welcome, and I love you. Let's have a word of prayer, and let's dig into today's important sermon. Jesus, I love you so much, and I just thank you for your blessings. And I thank you for each and every person out there, all the thousands that will tune in this weekend to hear your word from across the globe. And I pray that everyone will be saved by your precious blood. Lives will be changed. They will be touched, and people will be just, just shown new truths, and that you would guide me and direct me and guide my words, help me to put out the word the way you'd have me put it out. I ask it all in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. My friends, it's terrible what's going on right now. For those who live here and the former America, now no Morka, because it's no more, our brothers and sisters right to the north, <clears throat> up in Canada, it's terrible what's going on there. And you've got pastors being arrested everywhere. That's another whole story and put in jail. But now there have been dozens of Canadian churches torched in Canada torched, vandalized, burned down to the ground, while authorities and celebrities say, burn them all straight to the ground. It's ridiculous, my friends. It is beyond insane. Let's go ahead and go into scripture, and we'll talk about this some more. First Peter 5, 8, the King James Version Bible, again, is my Bible that I use. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. And my friends, the devil's everywhere. He's seeking, he's a lot like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. He's devouring the majority of this earth today, including Christians who are backslidden. The majority of the church is just so useless and weak and watered down now. Satan's having a heyday. He's in his prime. First Timothy chapter four. Let's go ahead and go with just the first two verses. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. This is something you see everywhere again in the church, in the world. It is just pathetic, and the the the, the, the great falling away, the great apostasy of Christians, is just taking off like like mad. <clears throat> it breaks my heart to see how ineffective and weak and watered down the church is, for all intents and purposes, around the world, with few exceptions. Now, the executive director of the British Columbia Civil Liberties Association. A, a, a association that calls for for civility and for and for liberty and and for people to have equal rights and justice supposedly this is what this is what, what they call for their leader the executive director is calling for more christian churches to be to be burned to the ground you heard me right harsha walia made the comment in a canada day at that canada day which is which is like their independence day tweet in response to news reports of two more churches being burned down she said, burn it all down, well, Leah tweeted. Burn churches down, hmm? I wouldn't want to be in her shoes when she stands before God. And radio host, a popular radio host in Canada, also says, burn the churches, as fires reported across Canada, telling it, burn it down. Let's burn all the churches down. It's amazing, my friends, what's going on. And the PM of Canada, Justin Trudeau, all he had to say on this whole dozens of churches being burned to the ground, vandalized, people dying and being killed in this, this is what he said. He said, the burning of the churches and destruction of churches isn't the way to go. That's it. He's he's not arresting people. He's not out there out there making sure it's not happening. Oh, it's not the way to go. What? I have no words for this. That's the leader of the country. Go back to the scripture that I just read. You refer to it. Back to it, and you'll see what's going on. The devil's having a heyday. It, that's the best. That's the so so pastors are still being arrested and imprisoned all across Canada. 
The churches are being burned to the ground. That's the best that all the head of Canada can come up with. Oh, that's not the way to go. Where is the outrage among the U.S. so-called Christians, so-called leaders as well? They're sadly as quiet as church mice. Oh, and does anyone in their right mind actually believe that this is, if this is happening in Canada, right across our border, just a couple hours drive from my house even, that it won't happen here? Just look at how screwed up our country is now. And if you apply even one ounce of common sense, then you know it's just a matter of time, a short matter of time, before this is happening right here in this country, in Mexico, all throughout the West, and everywhere. It's gonna, The world right now hates Christians. And the Bible says in the last days, Christians will be despised. And wait till after the imminent rapture, with all those who are left behind, <coughs> those backslidden Christians who don't believe they're backslidden, who don't believe they can be left behind, they'll find out otherwise when they are. And they have to run for their lives. Those who do come back to Jesus Christ and, and discover the error of their ways and repent and turn back to him, they have to run for their lives because the whole world is going to hate their guts. Family, friends, neighbors, strangers, anyone is going to come after them and try to and have them arrested. They'll be running for their lives. They'll be arrested, imprisoned, tortured, and beheaded if they refuse the mark of the beast and if they're saved by Jesus Christ's precious blood. This is an outrage to me. This is happening, and you just don't hear about it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about it. I'm sure the video, I'm sure my sermon will be throttled by social media like it always is. They don't want you to hear what I have to say. They don't tell you. Uh, they don't give you notifications to most of my friends and followers and subscribers. They don't tell you when I'm putting a video out on YouTube or on, or on Facebook. They don't like me. They hate all Christians' guts, and they want to see us fail. They want to see us throw in the towel, but I will never throw in the towel. I owe Jesus Christ everything, my friends. I owe him more than I can begin to even scratch the surface to repay to all of eternity, and I will give him my all until I am raptured or dead. That's it. I will always keep witnessing for him as long as I draw breath and I'm able to do it. I'm just sad to see what the church has become, how Christians, for the most part, don't care. They just have their own little patch of ground. They don't care what happens on around them as long as nothing interferes with their precious little life, everything's cool in the gang. But I'm telling you, my friends, Christians are going to find out the hard way when they stand before Jesus Christ. They should have been out there witnessing and praying. They should have been out there leading the lost to Christ. When he went back to heaven, after he was died, rose again on the third day, praise the Lord, and, and, and did his business on earth, went back to heaven, he only had one plan and one plan only, the Great Commission for all Christians, from then throughout all of history, till now until the end, Witness and pray for the lost and what, and, and what time we have left. That's the Great Commission. It's what we're all supposed to be doing. We should be praying for all these pastors in Canada and the rest of the world. Not just Canada. Canada's my focus today. But all around the world, we're having hundreds of thousands, including crass pastors, being martyred, being just killed, killed for their faith in Jesus Christ around the world. While Christians here in, in, in the West and North America have Bibles probably just spread all around their house. And they can get a Bible for a dollar at the dollar store, but they don't care what goes on in the Bible. They don't care what goes on in the world. They don't care people are suffering. All they want to do is care about themselves. It's me, me, me. It's the me generation. Even the older Christians are reverting back to the newfangled me generation. And it's sad. It's sickening. And if I'm so upset about this, can you imagine how upset Jesus Christ is and God is? It's sad. We need to understand our time on earth is short. Christians need to understand that we have very little time to reach the lost because soon, again, Christ is going to snatch away the true bride, and I believe the vast majority of those who are raptured will be the dead in Christ. I believe billions will be come up from the grave because the further back you go in history, the more Christians you had. There will be lots of babies and little ones, I believe, raptured. I believe that the adult Christians here in this country and around the world will be a minuscule part of the rapture because, sadly, most are backslidden. They're lukewarm, and Christ said, I will vomit you out of my mouth. If you're lukewarm, I'd rather you be hot or cold. It's sad, my friends. It's really sad. I hope everybody takes this to heart, shares this sermon, gets the word out, helps me spread the news. Because again, I'm always censored. They don't want to hear the truth. You need to help me by sharing this sermon. Every sermon, every video that I do, get it across to the masses so they can be find Jesus and return to Him. If you've never been saved, you're backslidden. Pray the prayer. Do the six steps I have in the box. Put a video. No one's guaranteed more time in your life. If you like prayer. Contact me. I pray for each and every day. And look up true Christians. Our redemption draweth nigh. He flies soon. May God bless you. Take care of yourselves. And please pray for the, for the, all those who are martyred and those who are, who are 
killed for Jesus' name, those who suffer in Christ's name, pray for them every day and just care about them and get the word out what's happened to them because trust me, the media won't do it and sadly, few Christians will anymore either. It's pathetic how bad things have gotten so fast. I'm just shocked. Take care of yourselves. May God bless you. I love you all dearly. Take care. Bye.